This is the 217 Recovery Podcast with Corey Winfield. I don't know. Why would they sit there and watch us talk into microphones and look right. at each other and look at your faces that you give me sometimes? And co-host Marnie Winfield. In situations like that, if you take the time to weigh the pros and cons of your involvement in something, I think this is across the board with a lot of things in life. You know, does it make sense for me in my world? It is the 20th of January, the year is 2022. What's up? I'm Corey Winfield. I'm Marty Winfield. This is the 217 Recovery Podcast. Welcome to the show. That's what they say in the big time market places that listen to us is welcome to the show. So welcome. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Any topic you want to talk about tonight, today, this evening? Mm, nothing in particular. Okay, great. Because, you know, I had something all lined up. I figured you would. And it kind of flows with the whole open there with, you know, is, if it's a miss, it making sense for you to do this or is it making sense for you not to do that? Mm-hmm. You know, there are situations we can find ourselves in, especially in early recovery, where we like to help people, right? Right. Well, not everybody wants the same kind of help. Meaning? And, well, meaning some people just want a place to stay that night. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I'll go to treatment tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sounds good. Let's do this. Or yeah, I want to change my life. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just let me crash here tonight. Mm -hmm. Just give me $20. Mm -hmm. Other people maybe just want some food, you know, and not everybody is going to want what you're offering them. Mm -hmm. So, Hey, I know how you can change your life for the better. They might listen, okay, but in, the, in, the, in their mind they're thinking, okay, but you better not tell me it involves not drinking because um, I can do what I want. If it's that, I'm not interested. I'll listen to you, bro, but that's it. You know, that's what they're thinking. But in the moment, they're like, yep, mm-hmm, yeah, oh, man, I agree totally, yep, mm-hmm. And they'll just go right along with you. So just watch that and be careful, and it's going to happen doesn't mean those are bad people that's just where they're at on their journey and some people sad to say don't want to change ever right and those people it's hard to walk away from them but you have to do it sometimes just for your own sanity and you have to realize that hey you're not jesus Mm -hmm. you know can't save everybody Mm -hmm. but just know when to say when no one's enough and one of the signs that for me personally, if I, if they ask me for suggestions or something and I kind of give them some things and I notice them not doing a single one of those things, they don't really want my help. They don't want my suggestions. They want my help out of that situation right then. Right. Which usually involves money and Hey, get me a hotel room, man, or whatever. And that's not what we're about. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to get someone a hotel room so they can safely drink. I mean, some people be like, but Corey, that's what you have to do. Meet them where they're at. Yeah. I don't have to do anything. I that's- think you've had a couple people who've reached out to you and said, and you, could you send me some money for a bus ticket so I can get to treatment? <laughs> you're like, yeah. well, where's treatment at? <laughs> why don't I just get you, why don't I just get you the bus ticket? Tennessee. Yeah. that and was, And then no response. <laughs> yeah, that was a crazy one. Cause I didn't check my phone for hours, maybe like six hours. And this person had messaged me. So when I do check my phone, I get this message and it was, Hey, help. Um, I wrecked my car, totaled it and I need to get to treatment tomorrow at noon. Mm -hmm. And by the time I got the message, it was like midnight and I was like, okay, well that ain't happening. No, but she was still on that kick though of, well, just, you know, give them the, and she went as far to see how much a plane ticket cost, see how much a bus ticket cost to screenshot it and send it to me. Mm-hmm. Like, and that that's how much I need because she needed both the bus and the plane. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, you can screenshot everything you want. I'm not that's, I'm not giving you the money for that. Plus, that plane already left. <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> I didn't say that, but I just I was shaking my head and I was like, "Honey, what is going on with people? Do they know that that's not my thing? Did they accidentally send that to me? Mm-hmm. That's not what Corey does." Or people that you haven't talked to in like years and years and years. Mm-hmm. 
and they're like, could you please send me $20 for some groceries? <sighs> like, first off, hey, how's it going with you? <laughs> because mm-hmm. you haven't checked in with me in almost a decade. Why would you ask me for $20? Tyrone was talking to me about that the other day, too. Yeah. He's like, yeah, these girls is on Facebook trying to talk to me. I hate saying it like that. But there was this woman. I don't know if he knew her or not. But she just asked him for money. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Tyrone, his big heart, he's like, well, what you need? And I was like, Tyrone, do not send her a dime. You might as well just burn your money. Just set it right on the table and light it on fire. Mm-hmm. Give it to me. Yeah. <laughs> but he was, he's just like, why do people do that? He's like, why do, why do people, how do they have the audacity? How can they sleep at night? Like, I don't know, man. Yeah, it's like it's some for some of them as a job. That's what they do. Like, oh, I can go hustle some guys, you know, show them pictures, some titties. It's probably not even a woman reaching out to him. It's probably some other guy. Who knows? You know, who's on the other end of that? They, yeah, and sending screenshots of um, <clears throat> sorry to come to of how much a plane ticket and a bus ticket costs. It's not going to get you. I mean, it might work for somebody. I don't know, but my whole thing was. Why, why do you need to go to, and her thing was she needed to go to Tennessee, like I mentioned, in Tennessee, why she doesn't live in Tennessee. She lives in Michigan. Mm-hmm. Well, I went to treatment there once, and I didn't go to, to sober living. That's where I messed up. I need to go back. Well, how, first of all, what? Like, I know how Medicaid works. Michigan's Medicaid is not going to pay for you to go to treatment in Tennessee. Oh, I want a scholarship. What? I, w- I want a grant. Huh? No, these treatment centers will get grants to give people to get into treatment, but that's that's something totally different. Like, a Tennessee rehab is not going to just be like, oh, yeah, you can come stay here for free with our state money. Well, the bottom line is if, if it doesn't make sense. I mean, and, the, and I've been, I mean, I've been, caution before even when i was in treatment and i was in other sober living homes is it's kind of just a rule of thumb you know just don't ask to borrow money and don't lend money to others it's just not good practice you know it's it's gonna hurt somebody or it's not gonna be fast enough or it's not gonna be paid back in full or they're gonna see him spending money on something else Mm -hmm. when they still own the dollar bills like, oh, why you got cigarettes now and you asked me for grocery money five days ago and now you got cigarettes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't know. It just, it's, it just it's never works out well. And it's not, it's not healthy. Yeah, that was one of the rules when I lived at Nathan's house in Point City was you don't loan people money. Right. And we kind of had the same thing when I managed the house was you don't loan money. And I, I tell the guys, look, if you want to give somebody money, Okay. I can't stop you from giving someone money, but don't you ever think you're getting it back or don't you ever think that you deserve something in return. Right. Because we don't do that here. Yep. And for the most part, guys didn't. It? Mm-hmm. You know, it's just one of the other managers um, decided he was going to take some money from people to let him have intercourse in the garage. But we won't talk about that. Whoa. What are you talking about? I heard what you said. Oh, did I say that out loud? Yeah, you mm-hmm. did. That's why I don't mess with that guy no more. Because that's not how, that's not what we were trying to do. Right. So, but yeah, just be careful when you're trying to help somebody. Not everybody has the same interest as you. And then you're going to be end up feeling pissed off because you got lied to. Or you got your feelings hurt. And you're going to be feeling some kind of way. Mm-hmm. So all of a sudden you're in a situation. You got resentments. Yep. For what? Trying to help somebody else. And that pisses you off. And when yeah. you're pissed off, what do you do? Mm-hmm. You're not very healthy in your in your brain and in your sanity level. Well, they caused me to do it. They made me go back to using. Did they? <laughs> and that's that's pretty, you know, that's a little over the top. But it's, there's, people have relapsed for less. Yeah. For sure. For sure. So that was my word to the wise. I like it. Thanks. It's a new segment. Mm-hmm. It's the only segment we're not doing it ever again, but <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. It was fun for me too. And I got to talk. It was brilliant. Loved it. Yeah. But 
my physical is still kind of messing with me. Stomach still hurts. Of course, when you go out and eat 12 boneless wings, it doesn't help. Mm-hmm. I ate 12 of them. Now my gut, oh my God, it hurts so bad. I guess maybe when the doctors say stay away from fatty foods for a oh, while. Oh, you're right. They yeah. need more than a day or two after you leave the well, hospital. Well, at least you had that they were boneless. That was, that was going good for you. I don't know. I had some onion rings. and I mean, It was just a bad bad situation. Mm-hmm. It's all Justin's fault because he, he made me wait. <laughs> so I didn't have any self-control, so I just ordered some wings. And then I ordered some onion rings and some fries. Thanks, Justin. It's your fault. <laughs> You weren't, you weren't there saving me for myself, bro. Thanks. <laughs> well, you are going to get um, your procedure done here soon, yeah. so that's good. Yeah. And I got a doctor appointment scheduled for tomorrow, so I'm going to bounce in there. Oh, I didn't talk about that, did I? My primary care doctor. Let's talk about that for a minute, because I need to unpack that. Okay, go ahead. So, before the whole... And the hospital thing happened again for this last time. I felt it coming on. It feels like somebody punches you in the stomach. And at first it kind of like, man, do I have to take a crap or I'm hungry? And so I drank a keto shake. which I don't think it helped it. And then it just came out worse. I'm like, man, maybe I got to use the bathroom. And then I'm in the bathroom thinking, no, 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 Corey. I know what this is. This is the old pancreas flaring up again. So I was able to put out the flames, I guess you could say. So the pain wasn't that bad that day, but the next day I needed to to do something, which was Monday. Martin Luther. No, no, it was Monday before this last one. So I scheduled an appointment with my doctor and get in to see her. And I explained to her like, Hey, this pancreatitis thing is coming back. I do not want to go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So in Traverse city, COVID has taken over the hospital and you you can't just get right in. It, we had to wait, I think, five hours of time before, and I think five or six hours I had to wait this time. And it, it was hell. You're sitting in this waiting room, and I was doubled over in pain. I think I had Tourette's. Every couple of minutes, I'd just drop an F-bomb, like, ah, oh, brr, because it hurts so bad. And I, I think you were underestimating my pain. And you were just like, shut up, don't be cussing. I didn't say that. I'm out of here. See ya. Deal with it yourself. So I was like, dang, okay, thanks, wifey. So I was there alone in a cold hospital. <sighs> That's Man. not how it went, it's but how okay. It went, it's how it went, it's how it went. So, but before all that happened, I tried to prevent it all from happening. And I told my doctor, hey, this is what I need. And this is what works for me. Because there's like a couple of different medications they can give me. And they tried to give me one like three different times. I'm like, I'm telling you, that doesn't work for me. So... I, we discussed what I'm going to be doing. Sounds good. Game plan's on. I drive to pick up medication and I look at my phone and I realize she gave me the medication that does not work. It's for like people who fall off roofs and break their arm or something. Like maybe that medication helps them, but it does not do anything for me in the pain I was in. And the doctor knew it. Mm-hmm. So I was livid and I thought, you know, it's, it's, it's more dosage, so let me let me take two. Maybe that'll maybe that'll help. And it didn't. It didn't help one bit. Didn't feel one bit of relief. So and then I'm starting to get nervous because I want to avoid the hospital. So I hurry up and run. Well, not run. I, I drove my vehicle over to the doctor's office and I dropped off the prescriptions because she had said to me before, at a previous time, oh well, I can give you this other stuff, but I gotta have the rest of those other ones so i drove the doctor's office here you go now can i get the other stuff that actually works message after message nothing and that's when finally i was like well thanks a lot doc for nothing i now have to go to the hospital which can be looked at as a blessing in disguise and one thing she did say to me in the appointment that day was well i don't want to be just throwing pills at you and it's just masking the pain when there's something else really going on that we need to take a look at and my whole thing was, I just don't want to go back to the hospital. I'm tired. I, I can't. Don't let me go back to the hospital again, please. Because they're busy enough with other things. Like, let me just not have pain and things. So in the hospital bed the next morning, like 
maybe an hour's sleep I got. I'm like texting, falling asleep, but I'm not texting, but I'm writing it out. You know, this mean letter to the doctor about, Hey, you, this is all your fault. I'm in the hospital. Thanks. Try to avoid it. And I erase it. Cause I'm like, no, that's too mean. And I write the next one. It was even meaner. And I'm like, no, I can't do that. So after about five hours of in and out of falling asleep while writing this, I realized what's, what's this going to do if I send this? Is she going to know what I'm mad? Okay. But what's, what's it going to solve? I me trying to put blame on other people. You know, what is, what is that going to do? Right. So ultimately I didn't send anything, which is, which is good because mm-hmm. I didn't react because boy, I wanted to. Right. And I was talking to a bunch of guys yesterday about acting and reacting and, and how tough it is not to just fire right back mm-hmm. and then you have to practice it. And I did the same thing with the letter that I wrote. Um, the lady who's in charge of the recovery services for DHHS in Michigan because man, I wanted to fire back some stuff. Cause once I got the proof, the evidence, I told you so's once I had that all in my, my pocket on my side, boy, I was ready to just unleash. And I spent probably a week <laughs> rewriting that one, having you read it. Mm-hmm. Cause I didn't want to come off as someone who's bitter or mad, but that's exactly how it was coming off. And it's really a, here's the facts kind of thing. And here's how we can help. You know, here's how we can be a part of the solution instead of just pointing fingers and saying, look what they did. Look what they did. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, well look what they are doing and look how we can be helping. You know, why is this such an issue? We're here to help. Yep. Unleash the beast. Hm. It's not like a beer thing. Unleash yeah. the beast. All right. Yeah. We'll pretend I didn't say that. then. Okay. I was never fond of taste of beer. Or alcohol, matter of fact. I don't know if very many people are. Mm. Well, I don't want to hear some people, even on the radio, but see, the people on radio are just full of shit anyway, and they're just saying whatever just to get advertising dollars. And mm. yeah, if you tell me to come out here, we're going to do a live broadcast. You pay us, I'll tell everybody it's good. Okay. But no, people are like, oh, yeah, man, you had the new IPA, bro. It's like super, like, tons of alcohol, and it has like a bittery taste. It's delicious. Well, I know that like the cocktails that are on menus at restaurants and things, they they don't want them to taste like alcohol. Like no. they purposely, I mean, not just not putting a whole lot in there, but right. it's not, you know, the whole idea is it's for no- normal people to get, you know, I don't know, if it's like why don't you just get cranberry juice then instead of get- because I like how it tastes. Well, then just get cranberry juice. You don't need to get a cosmopolitan. But but I feel relaxed afterward. And some people can do that. Yeah. Some you know, those, those drinks weren't made for us. No, I know they weren't. Oh, I want to get a mudslide. Can you put 90 proof <laughs> whiskey in that? Or how, is, is there room for the yeah. ice cream in that cup of whiskey? I, I don't think so. I have no, I don't have any idea about stuff like that. Like that makes no that sense could, at all to me. That might taste really good coming back up. But Maybe. we're not. But we're not. We're not normal. That's that's what the thing is. So. We're not beyond. Mm-hmm. And if we were normal, that sucks. We wouldn't be here. I would have never met you. <laughs> and that's that's the beauty of the things that happen for a reason. And no matter what you're going through today, tomorrow is different. And you set yourself up today for tomorrow. And it just takes time and. Every time I was in that pain when I was going to the hospital, I knew that it would be over soon. I knew, like, in three or four days, I'm not going to, I'm going to be in a better place, you know. So I just had to push through the pain. But damn, it hurt. But just, it's just like any other situation in life where it might hurt today, but just push through that pain because it doesn't mean it's going to hurt in a week from now, you know, or two weeks from now. Or, you know, you, you can change things around. And I know when I was in, my active addiction, it was hard for me to realize that because mm-hmm. I couldn't see anything around the corner. I couldn't see a week from today. And that scared me. I didn't know what was going to happen a week from today. I knew I wasn't in a spot that I wanted to be in. I didn't know how to get in the spot that I wanted to be in either. Mm-hmm. So it's confusing. And I tell people that I had like one foot, one foot in, one foot out. Yeah. And <laughs> that just didn't work. 
Well, and when you're when you're so sick like that, you don't. First off, you don't you don't even know how to get out of it. Like you feel so terrible about where you're at and confused about what it is that like how to even get there. It seems so out of reach to ever feel healthy again, to ever feel good. I forgot what it felt like to feel good. I actually physically feel well. I was so sick for so long, probably, probably actually sick, sick for at least six months straight. Mm. Like not. Yeah, I was, I was for sure. I I thought for sure I was going to die. I thought for sure, but I didn't want enough to do to fix it. You didn't know how. I didn't know how. I thought I had. I thought I had exhausted like all avenues, pretty much. And I knew that I had. And I felt so terrible about the person that I had become, and how many people I'd let down. First and foremost, my family. That I didn't even. Want, even though they would have been there in one second, I said, "Come get me, please. Help me. You know, get help me get out of this." They would have been there, no matter how bad a shape I was, no matter what hotel I was at, no matter, you know, it didn't matter. They would have come and got me, but I was just so sick. You know? Sucks. Yeah. Look at you now. I don't know. Look at me now. Mm-hmm. And then, well, I finally did do that. I finally just caved and, caught and got a hold of my mom. And then that's when I was in her when my mom had bought me a bottle you know that was bad because i was i would have seizures from if i didn't have alcohol and i was waiting on a bed and treatment it's a common mistake that people make though is that well i'm gonna take it all away from you yeah no don't (laughs) don't do that that's not that's not what you do yeah but i'm not saying feed them enough alcohol where they fall down on your coffee table either right it's you know there's a happy medium there and you, you have me watch a show the other day which one addicted yeah i was going to talk about that because tyrone suggested i watch it and <laughs> when you were talking it reminded me of that and mm-hmm. so i want to mention it but that face oh i saw it on that guy i think his name was bradley did you see that one where he was drinking and vodka was this thing and he had that face. Remember, like, you'd wake up in the morning. I remember I would look in the mirror and just not even recognize myself. And I would look like just hell. Mm-hmm. And that dude, I want to say it was the second episode, maybe third. The guy was like 26, but oh my God, that it reminded me so much of getting up and looking in the mirror and seeing that face of just like, whoa, just death. I didn't see that one. Oh, I kept falling asleep during it, but. But yeah, that, that was some that's some real stuff. That's the realest I think I've ever seen stuff on TV about somebody and their drinking, you know, and how he would puke the next morning, you know, if he didn't have any, and he was trying to explain it to his family, and they were kind of kind of understood, but kind of didn't. And they took him to some rehab, and he wasn't all about it. And one of the things that it was the woman on the show is an interventionist. Mm-hmm. And she shows up at rehab and tells him, all right, you got to go pack your stuff up from your house. Let's go. You're moving out of your apartment. What? Like You, you couldn't have got his family to do that? And the family had offered to, but she's like, no, he's got to clean up his own mess. And then he goes back to his house. And then I, don't, I don't think he ever goes back to treatment. I was like, that's a horrible plan. You know, that is a horrible plan. And sometimes and her philosophy behind it was, well, you got to see the, the wreckage you left behind. Do you? Mm-hmm. You know, my parents, um, thank God that they did, but they went to my apartment in Buchanan and like packed everything up and got everything out of there. And I mean, I don't think it was as bad as this guy's house. For sure, I don't think it was, but I'm sure it wasn't fun. And it just makes me think like, was, were they supposed to come get me from rehab to have me go pack that stuff up? You know, still. Right. Detoxing. I don't, I don't think that would have worked out very well. But the lady, I mean, she means one. The show's really kind of old. I think it's from 2010. But mm-hmm. the one you saw that I watched with you for a little bit was not comical, but kind of. I I don't know. I thought there were, it was sad. It was sad, but it was so real. Like <laughs> the chains on the, fr- the refrigerator. Mm-hmm. She's staying with her parents. And I don't, I'm not going to say her parents have a problem, but. 
the parents went and they had all kinds of liquor in their refrigerator outside or in their garage. So they went and they put this padlock on it and like put the chains around so she couldn't like just open it up and get her fingers through there. And so she spent like mm, 10 minutes doing that and then realized, well, I'll just take the door off. And she's getting out half gallons. I mean, she had so much liquor and I'm thinking if these people really cared about their daughter and the daughter's staying with them, why couldn't they just dump the alcohol out? I don't know. Maybe they felt like, hey, they spent good money on that. And what, <laughs> it's your what daughter. happens when they wanted to, who knows? They thought they did the job. They went to Aco <laughs> Hardware and they bought a padlock. And oh, a my chain. God. That's a horrible idea. Like, why would you think that that would, I mean, you're going to spend the effort, the energy, the money to go through all of that. I'm sure it's happened. Just throw it out. Throw it out. Let somebody hold it for you. Like, <laughs> to me, that was just silly. It was it's like, I wonder if they set that up or something, though. Maybe. Because even she's like, I wonder if my parents have a problem. They think I have a problem. They're the ones with the problem. And you and I both know, like, if they, if the parents really had a problem like that, there wouldn't be that much alcohol in the house. There never is. Because you drink it all. Right. You know, they wouldn't have, like, eight different kinds of whatever. Mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> No. no. So, but I don't know. I just thought that was kind of weird. Maybe it was. It was, it was a pretty good show, though. Mm -hmm. But that could have been for the show because all of a sudden the parents are going away for the weekend. You get camera crew at your house filming your daughter, and they're going to go away for the weekend. And oh, here's this refrigerator stocked with liquor. Yeah. Yeah, I think I just blew their show up. Hollywood. But the one kid, though, he was for real. Like, his stuff was legit. Like I said, you see his face, and you're just like, oh, my God, I remember that. It's hell. And then how he was talking about how he had to drink more to just, he's like, it's messed up that people don't understand this. But he's like, I got to drink more. And he's like, after one or two more drinks, I'm going to finally come to that point where I'm okay. I feel good. And not, like, good, like, buzzing, but you feel like, okay, I'm not sick anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of people don't understand, too, is you've been drinking so long there's no drinking for fun and it becomes like that dude said you're, you're drinking not to be sick anymore and like they said in the movie 28 days was it 28 days later or 20 it's one of sandra bullock yeah one of them was like a horror film no 28 days is is sandra bullock. That's her, okay yeah uh steve buscemi is in there as a uh, guy who runs a treatment center or whatever and he said that he would he would drink to, to feel normal and that's exactly what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't drink to get that butt. And we, of course we would because we wouldn't stop when we got to that comfortable feeling, that normal feeling. But yeah. Ugh. Praise Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Not there no more. But I don't know. We're going to wrap this one up though. Because I have quizzes and stuff to take for you're college. back to school too we got mm -hmm. two students in the house back to school to prove to daddy i'm not a fool <laughs> I, I spelled that up it was billy madison i know back to school back to school anyway yeah and you're back as well so I'll let you get back to saw all right <laughs> saw three or whatever you're on four yeah you're doing that for your class yep Good. Awesome. no i'm burned out i've been up since 5 30 this morning mm. working on work stuff well, you just oh. chill out and i'll give you some stuff to weed i'm talking about t-shirts stuff oh i We're know but art. i thought i know but that's like what, what i mean like just do nothing oh. i want to just do nothing all right yeah because well, we'll that's still something let's get you off this podcast asap <laughs> then let's get back to saw <laughs> thanks for listening get the app if you don't have it already it's the google play store the apple store here's tons of platforms all that jazz but feel free to donate, too. There's a donate button on the app, or you can start a birthday fundraiser through Facebook. You can always do that, so I appreciate it. And we'll talk to you on Saturday with a special guest. All right. Special guest for real this time. Okay. We'll right. see. And we will. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Thanks for listening to the 217 Recovery Podcast. When a bunch of free shit from 217 Recovery. Go to the app or the website, 217recovery.com.